Hey, what is up guys? It's your boy Blanky Speed here, and today we're back and I got a little bit of a mid-analysis for you guys. This was a match I just played where I got 40 MMR. You heard that right? 40 MMR. That can happen if you're immortal or above. I'm not gonna get into it, but either way, this game was a disaster. You could see in the early game it was going terribly. My alchemist was behind on net worth. My bounty hunter offlane was not doing well. I will say the redeeming quality of this game is that my Chen is massive. So I guess my safe lane actually did better than I thought because Chen is really, really farmed. But in terms of the core net worth, it is an absolute disaster and I got whooped mid. But we were able to turn the game around with some massive rotations. And so let's kind of get into that, right? Let's talk about these rotations and what allows me to make some big moves. And, and I think I took down Arteezy. I, don't, I honestly don't know. I can't imagine this isn't Arteezy though. It would be very weird if it's not him due to the profile picture, but either way, we played a great match in the mid game and let's get into it. All right, and before we get into the main part of the video, I do wanna let you guys know that I'm not only posting videos here on YouTube, I also frequently post videos on the website. If you don't know what I'm talking about, almost every single day I'm posting a new video to the Game League website. We're gonna teach you guys in depth about how to get to the next level. So if you wanna become absolutely broken and really take your game to the next level, I'm going to be able to help you because sometimes the guides on YouTube, there's either not enough of them, they're not specific, or they're just tier lists, which I know you guys love, but at the end of the day, the Game League website is gonna help you get to the next level. So click the link down below and sign up. Getting into it, uh, basically the main thing I'm looking to do is Primal is avoid the TA. Right? It's very important if I'm playing a hero like Primal or Ember Spirit that I understand who I can and cannot pressure. And if I lose mid, well, I can't pressure the TA, right? That's generally how it's going to go. If you lose your lane, you can't pressure your lane. So in those cases, you're going to have to look for opportunities elsewhere. I think a lot of the time people will lose their lane and then sit in their lane and hope things happen. And that can be the case, right? That could have happened. Maybe your supports will rotate, but typically it's not going to work. So here's what I'm going to look to do. Right? As soon as I can, I'm gonna look to get out of my lane and make the rotation. First thing I wanna do when I do that is try to clear the wave. Best case scenario, I can clear the wave and then make a rotation to make it less obvious. Now in this game, that's a little bit hard because the TA, like, she's just gonna push me out the creep wave and the traps prevent trample from doing anything. So I get pushed off the wave and I have to go back to base. But this is also why I rushed Windlace and Phase Boots. I rushed Windlace and Phase Boots because I know I need to get out of my lane. If I buy Magic Wand and Raindrops and I try to lane into the TA, the game's gonna be really hard because I'm not gonna be able to just sit in the lane with sustain items and beat the TA, right? My items need to synergize with what I need to do. So you can see when I'm walking back to base, you can see my, my camera moving around and I'm checking what lane can I gank. And I see that, okay, I have this opportunity to come top. I see the brute extending far. I'm gonna TP in the tree line and look for an opportunity to queue. I ping for my team to go in. This is very important that you ping. Otherwise people might not notice that you're coming. So I ping for my team to go in, onslaught trample, and we take out the brute. Fortunately for us as well, Techies misses his E, extends, and we get a double kill for our troubles. And this is where my game turned around, right? Because I was down nearly a thousand gold, and now I'm only really 400 gold behind the TA. So that was super, super game changing. Now from there, my thought process isn't gonna change. I'm doing whatever I can to get out of the mid lane and go somewhere else. And TA took the mid tower, which I'm not happy about, but let's be real. What was I gonna do to stop her? There was nothing I could have done to stop her. There was nothing. And so I come to the top lane and I look for another kill. Brute positioned better this time and reacted to my Q, so we weren't able to get the kill. Uh, maybe he also threw the concoction early. Uh, we stacked our stuns. We actually could have killed that guy if we didn't stack our stuns, which is pretty cool. This hero does a lot of damage. But here's why I made this play. I planned this out all in my head. I, this was pretty beast because I'm not a mid player, but I, I planned this out in my head. And I'm like, this is pretty legit. This really worked out. I'm going to gank Brood, and then if the gank fails, whatever. I'm gonna hit the twin gate. What is the best possible angle for killing the safe lane? Behind them. It's incredible, right? I mean, this rotation on Primal in particular is incredible. It's so broken actually, right? It's so broken because now I can hit the portal. I can come behind, right? Unfortunately, there was a watcher, so they sort of saw me, but somehow the techies walks. People are stupid, they'll die anyway. <laughs> so the techies dies to me anyway uh, and yeah, we're feeling good, we're feeling good. Now from there, I wanna to continue to look to the side lane. So I see the brood pushing top, I'm gonna to hit the portal. And this is what's so crazy. This is why I think Primal, if you really understand how to play the hero, can be a great mid laner. His ability to abuse his his mobility and phase boots and wind lanes is incredible, right? So I come in here, I realize, okay, I'm not gonna catch a brood, I'll clear the spiderlings, it's fine. I get a good amount of gold. 
We are going to lose the tower. My team just wasn't truly ready yet, but we linger around the area. I think this Watcher actually isn't theirs, but either way, the Brood for some reason doesn't react to the fact that we were here and ends up going down. So we get a nice kill onto the Brood. From there, we're going to be able to Onslaught Trample onto the Razor. I make the good read to know that I can't kill him. This is important, right? Just because he's getting low doesn't mean you should commit on him. In fact, it's the exact opposite. You get them low, but they're not that low. That's where you die. That's where you overextend. You get baited mentally into saying, okay, I'm going to kill them, and you can't. Right, my ulti's on CD, so I turn around, I get the clean track kill onto the Warlock, and this is where I made, I would say, my best play of the game. What is the enemy team going to do if we kill them top? What are they going to do? They're going to try to flip the map and farm the opposite side of the map. And so I'm thinking, okay, I can hit the portal and read the rotation, and what ends up happening? If it's Arteezy, well... Let's assume it's Arteezy, I, I don't know. <laughs> it's a very, he was the highest rank on their team, I'm pretty sure. We're gonna hit the portal and look for the kill on the Razor, right? And this is, right, this is such a great angle. We can get the backwards angle, hard for him to retreat because he hears the onslaught, but where does he think I am? He thinks I TP'd to the tier one to try to kill him. Joke's on him, I hit the, I hit the, uh, the, the portal and people don't expect it. No one's used to the portal, no one's used to it. So we get the trample off, just barely can't get the kill with the trample because the, the link actually makes me lose damage. We get the kill, a six kill streak for us here, and we even get the deny to Roche, which was massive because that takes away a huge portion of XP and gold from the Brood. So yeah, our rotations turn this game around because it went from a game where we were all bottom net worth to now our supports are freaking huge because we're winning fights with track, our bounty's doing okay, our Alk is catching up, I'm above their Razor and their Brood, who I was both behind, and so we're feeling great, right? I'm really feeling good. And I also queue up Halberd, which will come into play later on. Now, from here, this is where the game gets a little weird. This is a great smoke gank. The reason why I like this smoke gank is currently, it's hard for me to make a play. No one's farming bottom. Top wave is really far. Mid lane is under the tower, right? If I want to try to kill techies. So I'm like, okay, what can I do? And this smoke call, I think I told my witch doctor to smoke me. Or he smoked me, I can't remember. But we end up bumping into the Razor again, and this is wonderful, right? Because he thinks he's safe. How is this a dangerous area for him? It's only dangerous if we smoke, but obviously that's exactly what we did. And we get the kill, and that's another massive kill. Slowing down the enemy carry, and most importantly, tilting the enemy carry, as that will also come into play later on. <laughs> because tilting the enemy carry is very, very crucial. But from there, we're gonna farm up some camps, right? Kill off some neutrals, just wanna stay towards my team, towards the jungle. I consider TPing top, but whatever, nothing crazy is happening here. And so I'm gonna use my, my spells to farm a little bit. I'm gonna look to push in the mid wave, but my alchemist was here, which was kind of weird, but whatever, uh, as it wasn't very clear what to do. My team ends up feeding, and it's very important that I don't join them when they're feeding. They got caught in their jungle, I wasn't there, and even if I was there, I'm pretty sure it's a bad fight. I don't think we're that strong as a ball yet, right? Yet, because I think we have very little team fight. Uh, Bounty provides none, Witch Doctor provides basically none. Chen didn't even skill it, oh God! <laughs> My Chen doesn't have his ultimate, you know what I mean? <laughs> I didn't even know that during the game. <laughs> And really, I think one of the best things I do as a player, and I know this sounds a bit cocky, but I, I really do believe one of the best things I do as a player is I'm pretty good about not overextending. And you could say, oh, it's because you don't take a lot of risk or, you know, you just don't push onto the enemy side of the map a lot. And while that is somewhat true, sometimes I don't take as much risk as maybe I should. For instance, an opportunity like this arises. I didn't expect to run into the Warlock. I was actually just going to farm bottom, but whatever, I run into the Warlock. From there, I'm just paying attention to the TA, paying attention to the techies, Techies turns around for some reason, then we pick up a Techies kill, and sometimes people just get impatient, right? Human beings are pretty impatient, guys. And so, a lot of the time, if you don't jump, they will, and when they jump, they die. Because someone will overextend and isolate themselves, and that's when it's easiest to kill people in Dota, right? The isolated, overextended hero, for instance, this TA who got maledicted, I drop the Halberd onto her so she has no opportunity of turning, and we pick up another massive kill, extending our net worth lead to now 2,000 gold. And from there, I really wanted to continue to run at the Brood. I think Primal's pretty good against Brood. It's not incredible because it's actually hard to burst Brood uh, by herself. She's just so tanky with the stat build. But with a plus one, I can kill her. And I most certainly can kill the spiders onslaught one shot spiders because it's physical damage, right? So your hero is very, very good at killing spiders at minimum, which uh, my ulti didn't do there. But yeah, I was able to track the guy down. We had a good ward, partially playing around my wards. And we get another kill on the brute, another track kill at that too. 700 gold, not including track gold is insane. And also I think my item build is just good here. You know, a lot of the time I would never recommend rushing Halberd, but 
This game, it's kind of perfect because it's such a hard counter to Insatiable Hunger from Brood. I'm against two ranged heroes, so the duration lasts for five seconds instead of three seconds, right? And it's just great against TA and Razor, who are basically all physical damage, right? Gives me a lot of HP and some evasion to walk off uh, TA goes. And now keep in mind, after you win team fights, guys, don't be afraid to split up the map and farm. A lot of players, and I really recommend you try to get out of this, a lot of players get bloodthirsty right? And it's hard not to. I understand you're winning the game. Kills are worth so much gold and XP. You know, it feels good. But you'll notice every one in fight in our triangle, I just kind of flash from the jungle. I push out two of the creep waves. I onslaught trample. My team kills themselves mid. You know, I'm feeling good, right? I'm getting really, really farmed. And then I'll reconnect to my team. And this kind of just gives me a ton of gold. My team overextends and dies. And yeah, that is the problem about farming, right? You can't rely on your team to pay attention to you specifically hitting creeps for a small period of time, but it's important. It gives you a lot of map control and it makes it very clear what the enemy team is doing. If no one farms bottom, we should assume they are all mid and top, right? And so we should avoid them there unless we're trying to kill them. Now we're going to go in for a team fight here, and this was a crazy fight. The illusion rune was clutch here. So was the halberd. But we go in, onslaught trample onto the, onto the warlock. We're going to pick him up. Slam them down, and this was kind of looking bad. I will admit, at first, I was like, it's gonna be bad, but the Pulverize did so much damage. Now that they've buffed this ability, where it does extra damage per hit, right? This Razor took a chunk, probably about 500 damage, and that got him low enough to actually be taken out by the Alchemist. I finished off the Warlock, and yeah, a fight that was going pretty poorly went okay. On top of that, I really do believe that the Halberd being such a great purchase against three physical damage heroes just made all the difference because I have evasion, status resistance, and the illusion rune allowed me to dispel the Silken Bola, Echo Saber slow, any sort of slow here. And I also was able to disarm the TA so my Alk didn't have any threat here. I didn't have any threat and I didn't even really get low. I took half my health and I was chilling as then the techies kills himself. And yeah, we do take another kill here. Oh, and another kill. <laughs> And then the TA goes in and gets maledicted. Oh, and then the Brood went in and she died too. Oh my. Oh. And we won like 5k gold. Beautiful, beautiful team fight. 2v5 team white. And from there, the enemy team is definitely pretty tilted. I kind of almost threw the game here because I didn't go BKB, so I'm actually... Or like armor items, which I probably should have bought armor here. Because realistically, that's all I need to do this game against their heroes. They're just all minus armor. That's really all I have to worry about. Uh, but yeah, I went in here. I had a haste, so I guess I felt fine. Uh, which I was, <laughs> to be fair, I was fine. I kind of bait a lot of their time here, and this this ended up going okay because my team was roaching, so yeah, we get a free roche, you know, feels pretty good. We get a roche. They chase us around a little bit. They don't, they're not farming. We get the Aegis, and we're going to push in the midway, right? Once again, I'm okay with slowing down the pace of the game from time to time, right? Oh, this is great, though. But notice, when I'm farming, I'm trying to get across the map as fast as I can. I want to kill creep waves, and then get across the map. Because when you go across the map and you go towards the lanes, that's when you're going to find numbers advantages. And that's exactly what I do here. The Razor was low, and oh, I caught his TP. <laughs> that was huge. We got the TP. We take out the Warlock. And uh, you know what I said about people tilting and the game ending? That's going to be coming up soon, right? Hold your horses, because eventually, when you kill the enemy carry enough times, especially in pubs, you know, they can't, they're not going to keep it together. They can't, there's no way they keep it together. But yeah, that clip isn't a moment from now, as the Razor dies in the bottom lane, we pick up the Brood, we slam down the Brood, I don't think I kill this guy, and the Razor buys back. And uh, yeah, some good rotations to slow down the enemy carry's game goes all the way, guys, right? It really, well, it goes a long way is what I mean to say, right? It goes a long way. This fight was pretty insane. I got hit by the blast off, which, because I probably was completely fine if my onslaught kept going. I was probably okay, but I got hit by this. Uh, I was able to pop my E to give myself a ton of armor, right? So I thought for a second I might be fine with the halberd. I disarmed the razor and, you know, I made the right decision before I die here to get off my ulti. It drops the brood low. It drops techies extremely low, which allows Alk to finish him off cleanly. Otherwise... It would have been a big chase. So yeah, fortunately we got our we got our ulti off and my witch doctor cooked. I watched this fight back before making the video. My witch doctor Midas, he was tilted by the way, as you can see. <laughs> I don't have the perfect team, that's for sure. But look at him cook. I will, I'll give him some credit. He was tilted as hell, but look at him cook. Oh my god. Good god, the TA solo kill. Very bad reaction from the TA, I will admit, but. Either way, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. We do end up winning this game very, very shortly. Like literally we go high ground and end. Um, so yeah, if you enjoyed, 
If you see the value in hitting the portal, making these good rotations, make sure you like and subscribe. And uh, yeah, another big thing I'd like to highlight before before I end off the video that I, I really want you guys to take out of this video is the going back to base. When I went back to base, I did lose my mid tower, which is not a good thing, but I kind of had to. And it really did save my game because imagine I just sat around mid with no resources and tried to defend and then died to TA. I probably would have lost the game because I would have just never been able to get the ball rolling. I wouldn't have been able to pressure the brood. Maybe the brood then would have secured the area and started to farm in areas where I can't catch her right in the deep jungle. Uh, it would have made it harder for my Alc to farm. It's all a huge snowball effect. And Dota truly is that. And so I think I really got off to the right uh, on the right foot by going back to base there, buying the right items in the phase win lanes, and using that to pick up the kill on the brute. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one. And I'm out. Peace. And that's all. But remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below. And I'm out. Peace.